Hey Potters, I just want to show you some tips and tricks of doing your underglaze transfer. I've practiced this so many times and each time I learn something new. So I'm going to try to pass that information on to you guys. Okay, the supplies I have to do this is my Xerox copy um, that's done out of a laser jet printer. And then I have underglazed the white areas. A sponge, a spray bottle, and then you could use a spoon, but I prefer to use <clears throat> a metal rib. So the first thing you're gonna do is you can see how this is super dull where the underglaze is. You want to, with your water, spray this as even as possible. I actually wish our spray bottle was a little, had a little bit of a finer mist. So you can see that it's pretty wet, okay? So now I'm going, see how shiny it is? Now I'm just gonna let this sit out in the open air. I'm gonna keep a close eye on it because I want it to look more velvety rather than shiny. See this one right here is already looking more velvety. So it's wet, but there's no shine to it. Now the tricky part is, is I need them <laughs> to all be like this at the same time. Um, and this right here is really wet. So I'm just gonna spray it on those two sides one more time and hope I can get them to turn velvet at the same time. Next up is the pot you're gonna work on. Um, you know, you can do underglaze underneath. Uh, if you want, you can just use the bare clay um, color. I like to underglaze underneath just to give some more dimension to it. So that's what I've done here. But unfortunately, this pot has gotten a little dry. And ideally, we want to do this when it's leather hard. So I'm just going to try to rehydrate this pot a little bit before I transfer. You don't want it uh, really wet, but you also don't want it bone dry. So really pay attention to how wet or dry your pot is. Ideally, you can see how it's shiny here. Ideally, you want it to be that more velvety look. Now coming back to this, like it's so close to being velvety, but I still have some really shiny parts. Now, this looks pretty good. It's still wet, but none of it's shiny. Okay. If I have a smaller one, oh, I'll show you this. Let's say this one, it's already used, but if I have a smaller one um, or any kind that I have, I cut out the extra paper around the outside, but I like to keep a little bit of the white right here so that when you're rubbing, pressing this against the pot, you're not rubbing your clay. Uh, I'm gonna take my pot. I actually like to work in my lap um, but you could use a pillow or just carefully put it on your surface. And then you're going to start like bend it because we're going to try to avoid air bubbles. And this only really works on pots that are straight up and down unless you had a much smaller one, which you could do. So I'm going to stretch it out over. And then if you can, it's nice to be able to hold it together on this side. And then I take my damp sponge. Uh, it's pretty heavy damp, I would say. And I first just kind of go over the whole thing because I really just want to get it to attach. I'm applying firm pressure. I don't mind the wrinkles so much. Um, I think it gives it character. So you can see here, I like having that extra because if I were to rub that all the way to the edge, it would start rubbing my clay off. But since I have that extra, I can get all the way to the edge of the transfer without rubbing the clay. Okay, so once I have that all wet, then I take a metal rib and it's really, I, 
really pay attention to the sides and the edges. I feel like that's the part that gets left out. So the goal is, is to do this over the whole thing. This part takes some patience, but it's worth it. Otherwise your design won't get all the way transferred. You had a nice, flat, shiny stone. That would work good for this too. It's kind of similar to burnishing your clay. You have to be careful because the paper gets a little uh, fragile so you're not scraping or scratching the paper away. Down here can be tricky. I'm gonna even press it with my firm fingertips. And you can already see it's starting to get, the paper starting to get drier because since that pot is leather hard, close to being dry, it's just soaking up the underglaze. Now this technique is not gonna give you a perfect, a perfect result in the sense of like super clear lines. Um, but I kind of like the kind of chippy look that it does give you. So you're gonna start pulling this off. And if it's really hasn't adhered, like I don't think this looks good, I'm just gonna flip that right back on. I'm gonna get it wet again, and I'm gonna keep rubbing. This is actually a pretty big, pretty big transfer here. Okay, so this paper might stick to the pot a little bit. I just take a needle tool and pick it off if that happens. This one I seem to have to rub quite a bit, so the paper is sticking quite a bit. But that is okay. You just take a needle tool and start picking it off. And actually, I mean, that would just burn off in the kiln too, so you don't have to be too worried about it but I like to at least get some of it off. All right, so this is what this one turned out. And you can see, I mean, it's super chippy, but I like that it kind of gives it that old antique -y look. Um, it's also fun to do, you know, more here. Doing it in, when it's leather hard, like, like dry leather hard, the end of leather hard, it's nice too because if you wanted to, you could go back in and scraffito or carve um, and do lots of different things. Again, this paper stuff will burn off in the kiln, um, but there you have it. All right, another um, thing I wanna talk to you about is your designs. You wanna make sure that they're super bold, that they're black and white, no gray, um, really fine lines, um, doesn't do as well resisting the underglaze. Hey there, if you're still watching, um, that video was a great example of uh, what I talk about when I uh, speak to groups about flipping your studio or flipping your classroom. Um, I had done that technique five times today not in front of the camera and that went much easier than it did as soon as I turned on the camera. But I think it's important that we only take one shot. Um, we don't spend all day videoing. Uh, and it's okay to show students the ones that aren't so easy or the takes that aren't so easy so that they can um, see you problem solve through those issues. Um, if it happened to you, it's probably gonna happen to them. So keep it simple, do one shot, 
um, show them the process realistically rather than, you know, making it look so easy all the time. It's not easy.